when I sat down, my breast would sit on my lap. And I was just like, that's, that's just a lot, you know. I'm just, I'm a child. I'm a child. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm Lerato and this is Budget Buddy, a platform where we speak about budgeting, saving, investing while we live our best lives. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my breast reduction journey as well as all the costs around it. I'm going to be transparent. You are getting all the details today. Why did I get the surgery? Hmm. So I, I got the surgery because I had a very big breast. I was a size 34 J. Yes, J. Not G, H, I, J. I was a size J. Literally when I sat down, my breast would sit on my lap. It was that bad. So I got the surgery because they were big. I had back pains. I hated how my body looked. Um, I couldn't find clothes anywhere and it was just a very uncomfortable situation going on. I couldn't sleep, you know, I was just very unhappy with how I looked. I have always wanted to get the surgery from when I was in high school. It's basically when my breast started to make me uncomfortable and this was in high school. Then I went to varsity. When I was in varsity, I was still thinking about it, but I never had that push, you know, that do it, sis. do it, the time is now. And I always had that thing that, you know, I will get used to them maybe, or I will do it later, but I knew I hated them. This year when Corona hit, I had to start working from home. So when I started to work from home, you know, when you're at home, you don't want to be wearing your bra. I don't know if people like to wear their bras at home. I don't like wearing a bra. And I didn't realize that my breast actually needed the bra for support. So when I was at home, I would be sitting down and I would literally be bending like this because of how heavy they were. I started to have back pains. They started to be severe and I was like, you know what, let me go see my GP. I went to see my GP. My GP was like, listen, you and I both know sis. You been knowing that the issue here is your breast. And she was like, you know, I recommend that you go see a plastic and reconstruct reconstruction surgeon, I believe. Yes, go see that doctor and let them see if you really need the breast reduction. So I was like, cool. So I hit up my medical aid and they're like, sis, we don't cover that kind of procedure. And they tell me that even if I go through the, you know, that there's this process that they make you go through where they scan you to see if your spinal cord is really suffering, if your back pains are really because of your breasts. The whole 20 something years that I have lived with these breasts, had I hadn't been happy and I knew that even if I went through that process and they said, no, we can't help you, I would still want to continue with the process. So I decided not to do the, go through that process of trying to prove to them that I need the surgery and just go to see a plastic surgeon and you know to see what they say i am based in Santon, so i started to make calls around Santon to see which doctors are available to see how much i would need to pay for the whole process i called around and somewhere like you know eighty thousand ninety thousand yo one yeah. <laughs> and i was just like that's that's just a lot you know i'm just I'm a child. I'm a child. <laughs> um, I called this other doctor, my doctor actually. I called his office and they were like, it's around 70,000, 75,000. And I was like, you know what? This one is doable and he, he is highly rated. So I booked a consultation. I went to see him. And when I got to the consultation, you know, he welcomed me. He was like, how are you? And I was like, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> That's not what I so when I got there, he was like, let's see what you're working with. He asked me, why do you, why do I want the surgery? Um, which size would I like? And I told him that I would like C, you know, A young C, A young C to be all cute, C for cute. <laughs> wow. He was like, listen, um, you know, I will try to give you a C, but 
it might not work out that way and it's like I oh, know it's cool man I just really need the weight of my shoulders do you see what I did there <laughs> we went into this other room the examination room I believe and he looked at my breasts he measured my breasts and you I am doing all of these during the lockdown so I think it was level three or level four no I think it was level three it was level three he was like listen if it wasn't for corona we would have the surgery next week but because of corona there's restrictions and this is considered an elective surgery so we can't do it now we will have to wait for them to open the country basically and i'm like um okay that's fine i don't have the money anyway <laughs> so when i went to see my doctor guys i didn't know how i was going to finance this thing i really didn't know i was i think i was just going with the faith you know the faith i just wanted to start with the process i feel like most of the time you just have to start same way i started this youtube channel so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe please hit that subscribe i mean you made it this far come on i just wanted to get the ball rolling because i feel like the whole time i was just like i will do it i will do it but i was actually not doing anything and luckily when i went to him he he gave me like these slides he's like this is how the process is going to go and in those slides there were options on how i can finance the surgery but we will get to that later um so we had the consultation he measured everything now we're just waiting for fellow south africans you know luckily i think it was a month or less the president announced that fellow south africans the country is open and you know what that meant for me my surgery was going to happen i cried I cried guys um the very next day my doctor sent me an email saying listen this is the quotation if you have the money i'm ready just choose a date and i was like yay what i had to cry <laughs> um, i remember i was with my friend and i was literally holding the wall like this <sighs> and she was just looking at me like wow okay that <laughs> i chose a date i chose the 25th of, of september the day of the surgery finally arrived I think we need a moment of silence while you edit hit that like button because I don't think I've ever been this that happy in my life I don't I'm actually can you see I'm tearing up <laughs> just thinking about it it was a very beautiful day very very scared as well because my pain tolerance is this this big I hate pain. My sister actually came to stay with me because I asked her to come and stay with me during the recovery process. So unfortunately, because of Corona and their regulations, I couldn't take anyone to the hospital. I had to go by myself. So I went by myself the 25th, woke up by very early in the morning. I took a shower. I went to the hospital. I went to St. Mary Clinic and it was i was actually late when i got there i literally found my doctor and the people in the surgical units the nurses waiting for me when i walked in they're like are you Lerato? and i was like yes and then i come and then i went and then you know they got me set up my doctor drew on me um and it was it was real it's really happening it's really happening and he actually had a surgery a surgery that he had to perform before he had before he could perform on me so he just wanted to prep me and then go to the surgery so that when he's done they just take me up to the surgery room the theater the, the theater they take me to the theater and i would find him there so around around 9 30 a.m they came they took me and you know how on like medical shows they push like the patients in that bed that stretching bed thing 
so they pushed me and I was like they pushed me into the lift literally just sitting there looking at people in the lift you know I don't know I just felt weird because they also hadn't given me anything I was still very sober <laughs> so it was a very awkward situation for me but I think for them it was like they're used to it for me I was just like oh, okay um, then we got to the theater unit and I think I waited for about 20 minutes and then the, the doctor that does the anesthesia came to speak to me to ask if I'm allergic to anything whatever 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 to just check if whatever he's going to give me will not kill me you know these things they can kill you you can die guys bit of an over exaggeration but mm -hmm. and he asked me questions and he we yeah he was like okay cool I'll see you in the theater and then when the doctor was ready they took me to the theater and when I got to the theater I remember they told me to get on the other it was like a smaller bed it doesn't even feel like a bed it's very really like stiff it's like steel told me to get on it I got on it it has like arms then they told me to put my arms out, I put them out, and then the doctor, the anesthetist, I can't, I can't pronounce that word, the doctor of the anesthesia came and he was like, he tried to get like my vein on my hand and he couldn't find anything. He actually put the needle in and he was not finding the vein and he took it out and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god and then he turned my hand and then he wanted to do it on this side and then he was like no actually let's make her sleep first before we do that because this is painful and then he gave me that he put that um, breathing thing on on my nose and mouth he covered my nose and mouth and he was like breathe in breathe out and then you know and he was so good he, he was looking at me he's like you're doing good breathe in. then I could literally him like feel myself fading away <laughs> it was so weird like I was breathing in out in out the next thing I am fading like I could feel myself fading and then I, I, I was gone I faded I was gone and then when I woke up I I woke up but I was still heavily dragged I was still out when I woke up, I just saw this lady saying, the surgery went well, we're going to take you back to your surgical unit. And I was like, huh? What surgery? <laughs> That's how out I was. I think the surgery took two hours and it was around lunch when I got back. So they had already prepared my food. They had put it on the, on my bed side. So when I get there, I'm still out. And by you, I could not feel anything. I could not feel, I could feel that my chest was tight, but I could not feel anything. I could not feel any pain or anything. And it was, I was, I was really, heavy. I was high. I was high. But I, I couldn't eat because I was just here. And when I tried to eat, when I tried to swallow, I would get so nauseous. So I just stopped trying to eat and I just slept. And when I woke up, when I woke up, like properly wake up, I woke up with drains coming from the sides of my breasts and they were joining with this, um, into this like container. So there was blood coming out of my breasts and going into that container. And can I tell you, I only realized, I think when I tried to move the whole time, I did not feel it. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, I got things coming out of me. And I tried to stand up to go to the toilet and I was actually able to do it. I was so happy and so proud that I could do that. And I was happy that I was not feeling any pain. I mean, they were pumping us with oxycodone and paracetamol. So, yeah, you know, I couldn't, I, there was no way I was going to feel any pain. I was, I actually felt like, I hadn't gone through a surgery because I could not feel the pain and the nurses kept telling me take it easy you don't want to come back take it easy and I was like Shh, what are you talking about I'm fine the next morning I was like yo 
I just went through surgery guys I could start feeling the tightness of my chest because my doctor came and when he took out the drains I could feel I could feel them I was like yo that was really sore <laughs> It was really so when he took them out and he told he also told me to take it easy even though i might not be feeling pain a lot of pain at my body is in recovery so i should not lift heavy stuff or whatever so i basically just stayed one day because i got i got there at like 6 a.m on friday and around 11 my friend picked me up and i came home and when i got home the drugs were gone. Those ones that they put in your veins, they were gone. Now I was feeling the pain. <laughs> but it was very bearable. I would rate it 3 out of 10. I could still move. I could still do stuff. I was not, I was just like uncomfortable because I had to sleep facing up the whole time. If you have to sleep like that 2 to 3 weeks, it's, it gets uncomfortable. So it wasn't that painful. I would rate it three out of ten, and uh, my doctor was my doctor was very good, and the people that helped him, <laughs> he was very good. I was very happy with his work and how I was feeling after. So now we get to the juicy part, the shimoni, the mula. How I paid for this, it was actually very expensive. So, I'm going to break it down from the very beginning. So, when I went for the consultation, um, the consultation was 1,000 rands. In this consultation, that's when he did the measurements. He wrote, and wrote down everything and he explained everything that would happen in the procedure. And, yeah, that was it. I didn't even have to see him again. I literally saw him with the first consultation and then I, went, I saw him when I had the surgery, the day of the surgery. Um, after the consultation, they send me a quotation. So they're like, this is how much you're going to charge me. So I am going to start with the doctor and his assistants. The doctor for his services, it was 29,900. So that was the doctor's service fee basically for his skills. His hard end education experience yeah it was 29,900 rands and then moving on to the doctor of the anesthesi anesthesia I really struggle with that word for so the doctor was I had to pay 10,600 for this doctor and then for my overnight stay this includes food the bed me using the theater at Centen Medi Clinic, they made me pay 33,155 friends. So this included everything from the meds and the, you know, everything that they had to give me and their services and the nurses helping, everything. And then from there, I also had to pay 700 rand for insurance. This is Jen Lib. Gen Lib insurance. This is the insurance to cover any events that might occur during the surgery or 30 days after the surgery. So if I had any complications after the surgery, then I would be able to go back to the theater for the doctor to perform like the, I don't know, the follow up or to fix or to do whatever um, he would need to do and Gen Lib would, would pay for that. I wouldn't need to pay from my pockets for that. And then there was also a payment for the surgical bra that I would be wearing as well as the gel that my doctor gave to me to apply after I take a shower. So these ones added up to 1,450. was everything on the quotation. So the quotation was in total, it was 75,805 rands. I didn't have the money but I had saved 10,000 rands, so I was going to pay 10,000 rands. I just needed to find 65,000 rands, you know? <laughs> um, so that's the one that I had to find a way to finance. And then the other cost that I had to pay from my pocket was after the, after the, after the first week of 
um, the surgery I needed a second bra because I couldn't just stay with one bra and I had to wear the bra 24 7 so I wanted to buy the second bra the second bra was 850 and my doctor also gave me a prescription of I think it was around 150 rands the other expense that I incurred out of my pocket was to check the breast tissue so after they removed the breast the breast tissue from my breast <laughs> they they took it to the lab to check if there were any of abnormalities if there were any lumps or tumors or anything like that anything that i would need to look out for after i get i get the surgery moving forward this cost me 2970 rands so so all of these ones that are out of my pocket do not are not included in the 65,000. So I still needed to buy the 65,000 rands. So what I did was, remember I said that the slides that he gave to me had a, how I could finance the surgery. I looked at those things and then I contacted this, this fi fi um, medical financing institution called Medifin. It's, it's based in Cape Town. I contacted them and I was like, you know, I want to get this surgery and I don't have the money. Um, this is how much I need. I need 65,805 rands. And then they were like, okay, no, we can actually help you with this. They offered to, to finance this for me at an interest rate of 24.5. They said that this is because it's an unsecured loan. Literally, I could die in the surgery <laughs> and they have already paid. So that's why the interest rate was so high. And I was like, okay, so, hmm, surely when they give you those first interests, this is what, what works for them, you know, it's, it's what's best for them. So if I don't negotiate, you know, I might be losing out. So I was just like, isn't there a way that you guys can decrease this interest rate because it's very high? And they're like, no you know we can't and i was like okay so what i did was i went to the bank i went to the bank and i was like yo people with the monies here's my situation i need this amount of money i need sixty-five thousand eight hundred and five friends so they were just like this is this unsecured loan we're going to we would be able to give it to you at 23.75 percent and i was like interesting so I went to Medifin and I was like, hi Medifin, another institution is willing to give me this, the same amount of loan for, at this interest rate, 23.75. And then they were like, okay, we can be able to do 23.5. Um, I was running out of time. I did not have time to go to other institutions so that I can get the best interest rate. So I accepted the Medifin's offer of 23.5. And this, mind you, this is 1% less than what they had offered before. So I was quite happy with the results. Moral of the story, always negotiate. Do not be scared to go to other institutions always make sure you have enough time to find what is best for you because when you go to a finance financial institution and you tell them that this is how much you need they say yeah we can give you this at this rate that rate trust me it's what's best for them the moral of the story that's the moral of this whole video <laughs> since this is a financial literacy channel subscribe like tell your friends share you know yeah, and in terms of recovery, I have been doing so well. Um, it's been a month now, and I actually started drinking yesterday. I was able to drink, so which is great. I was, I mean, I could have drank earlier. I was just not comfortable with it. But yesterday, I was like, you know what? I feel like the time has arrived. The time has arrived. And so that's what I did. I drank. Champezi, Shambobo, you know how we do it. Because <laughs> we live our best lives over here. We live our best lives. So I have been doing well. The doctor was able to get me to a 34D. Um, I had asked for a 34C. However, you know, you never know these things. And I'm very happy with the D. I look 
cute ass. I wear my clothes and walk around and I'm like, Jesus, this, this you? This is you? Really? Really, really? <laughs> if you are thinking to get a breast reduction, I really recommend that you go see a doctor and take it from there. Just take the first step. I believe you should be able to find what works for you. And don't be scared. Another thing, you know, I... I went to see my doctor with my first consultation when he showed me his work I was very happy he showed me like you know how the a black woman would look in after he had done the surgery how a black woman looked you know I'm happy that he's first of all he's not showing me someone that doesn't look like me it's showing me someone that looks like me and that person looked really good so I didn't feel the need to go around also you know I just didn't have 1,000 rents to be you know popping around <laughs> and you know but if you do have the resources if you do have the money please look around go to different searches make sure you choose the one that you feel is best for you and yeah i'm so happy that you guys made it up to here if you made it up to here please like subscribe and share with your friends share this information with people who might need it um, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.